It's 5 a.m. in the port of Miami, and Freedom of the Seas is being prepared for a trip like no other. Freedom is the first ship of her kind, breaking records as the biggest cruise ship in the world. More than 4,300 people are starting to board. Now, now here comes the guests coming across the game. Freedom is set to take them on a journey through some of the Caribbean's most famous waters, and the guests have been promised the royal treatment. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ken, your cruise director. Whatever you choose to do, we hope you have a wonderful morning here aboard our beautiful Freedom. All right, let's go. Yeah. All entertainment on the cruise is the responsibility of cruise director Ken Rush. How you doing, sir? A man who's something of a legend in the cruise industry. It'll be 22 years at the end of January. I, I turned 44, so it's kind of funny that exactly half of my life has been out at sea. Good morning. How are you doing? The most challenging part of my job is trying to make everyone happy, and I know that that's an impossibility in the world today. And many people have told me that, Ken, there's no way you can make everybody happy, but that still doesn't stop me from trying. Hi, guys. How are you? We're going to have the tea. On Freedom, appearances are everything. The chocolate box image extends beyond the decor. Yes. The passengers continue to board steadily. Morning. Freedom needs to be fully stocked to cater for so many festive guests. Over 500 tons of food is loaded onto the ship. There will be no opportunities to restock once Freedom is at sea. There are very strict laws that prohibit food from being taken on or off the ship in other countries. So everything that's needed for the cruise must be on board at the start. The loading in Miami is limited to a few hours. A hectic time for Robert Branch, the inventory manager, and Johan Petushnik, the executive chef. Robert takes care of the logistics while Johan checks that supplies have arrived. Julie Sherrington knows just how important it is for freedom to be stocked before setting sail. She's head of guest relations, and it's her job to make sure that the guests have everything they need and that they know how and where to find it. The food is, is, is paramount to them, absolutely. Now, I had a guest ring me up and say, you know, where can I eat today? And I read the compass. He could start at 6 o'clock breakfast till 11, and then he, um, from 12 till 4 afternoon tea, you know, and then went on and I think I missed out one hour and he said well what about between four and five and I said I wanted to say but if you haven't eaten enough in the rest of the times I've given you then there's something wrong. So far embarkation is going smoothly. Most of the facilities are already open and there have been no complaints yet. But problems with loading can always occur. Whenever chef Johan discovers spoiled supplies he must alter his plans. The only thing what we have is a little problem with the avocados. We get some uh, new ones in. And uh, I hope they're coming soon. Avocados might not seem like a big deal, but changing a menu carefully calculated to cater for almost 6,000 people every day is an enormous challenge for any catering crew. The shopping list was calculated by Robert and his inventory staff. But there are still a few wild cards. People like to celebrate, and we take that into account. It's a, it's a high end, it's a, it's a premium cruise, so the, the clientele are a lot more affluent. You look at uh, maybe five glasses of champagne in a bottle, you can do the maths, you need at least a, a, a thousand bottles of champagne. Freedom regularly takes on over 7,000 kilograms of beef along with over 22,000 fresh eggs, 3,300 kilograms of lettuce, 1,600 kilograms of onions, and 6,800 kilograms of potatoes. And that's only a fraction of the food order. Yeah. How soon till we're... Hey, Bobby. How soon till we're done? Almost everything has been loaded. All the guests are also on board. And Julie's pleased that everyone seems happy so far. Freedom is ready to leave the port. It's too late if anything's missing now. Okay, wait. Oh, 
It's just crazy. Freedom leaves Miami. The cruise has begun. The ship was designed to weather almost any storm. But Captain Carlos Pedersini is well aware that Mother Nature has crashed a few cruise ship parties over the past few years. Captain Pedersini is the man who's been selected to sail nearly 6,000 lives safely through the Caribbean. He's normally cautious about being filmed or photographed for broadcast. Recently, he refused to be photographed for an Argentinian newspaper, fearing that his family would become the target of kidnappers. But he's made a rare exception for our crew. The captain personally welcomes guests on board. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you with us. Oh, oh wait, Rachel. Rachel, how many cruises for you, Rachel? Five. Five. And but she's going to be five. But what I want to find out is, where do I get a, a, a VDV of him? DVD. <laughs> But getting to know his guests is not the captain's main priority. Hi. He'll be steering freedom on a course infamous for hurricane activity. In October 2005, Hurricane Wilma hit the Caribbean with full force. It was the most intense hurricane that's ever been recorded in the Atlantic Basin. It devastated Cozumel, Jamaica, Haiti and the Cayman Islands each one a port of call on this cruise. With the aid of sophisticated weather detection technology and constant updates, Captain Pedersini hopes he can steer freedom clear of any meteorological surprises. Freedom's doctor is hoping to navigate his way around some natural disasters of a different kind. Only a few weeks ago, Dr. Philip Van Niekerk was faced with a major problem. A number of guests contracted a norovirus, a contagious stomach bug. It was worldwide over the news with this uh, norovirus. And it doesn't really stem from the ship, it's people that brings it in from outside. If two people come on board with this, because we're in a closed environment, it's going to spread around like that. So that's what ended up happening here on the Freedom. More than 380 people on board were ill. And even with Freedom's own onboard laboratory and ER, the ship was forced to dock for two full days, putting enormous pressure on Ken and the crew. All guests are now urged to sanitize their hands as often as possible, particularly before eating. As expected, the guests have embarked hungry. One of the big draw cards on the cruise is the promise of exceptional food 24 hours a day. Literally, you see them going from one to the other to the other, and their plates are piled high like this, and but they throw a lot of it away, which is a terrible shame. Waste management is an important part of Freedom's inner workings. The ship has its own waste processing plant, and all rubbish is meticulously sorted. Cans are compressed and stored, ready for offloading back on land. Glass is crushed in preparation for recycling and all solid waste is stored until it can be incinerated or disposed of on land. Freedom dumps no solid waste at sea. Johan has 250 chefs on board Freedom, and it's here in the galley where over a million US dollars worth of provisions are being turned into banquets. With such strict health regulations, the galley is always out of bounds except for registered personnel. Camera crews are seldom allowed here, this is a rare glimpse inside. Johan plans to serve 70,000 plates of food and 15,000 desserts each day. And that plate count will go up on the night of the big party. When you have so many plates, it's the first rule is don't run out for anything. Secondly, it's just don't burn anything. Of course, we're the biggest and largest ship in the world and everybody expects much more than on other ships. Freedom has barely left the harbour, and already the first room service orders are in. Okay, can I have the, the card, please? Pretty is on the room service shift. 
for two people, uh, for two people, they could actually order like five burgers and five pepperoni pizzas, but sometimes they wouldn't eat the food. Then you pick up, then you come back in, on the hallway and the food is outside on the corridor. So they just they just eat for the fun of it, most probably because it's for free. Ken's reputation as the ultimate party planner is being put to the test. Yo. Hey. What's up? What do you think about, uh, for New Year's Eve, putting the Scratch DJ... On the pool deck? On the pool deck. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah? Thank you. Cool. Okay, ring the new year and then feel... Uh, the demands of being a cruise director and a celebrity are constant. Uh, I've got to be... I'll do as much as I can, and then i got to run away and go do an activity and run back and... But it'll be it'll be fine. Sometimes there's not enough hours in the day, but somehow we we figure it out. Ken is also executive producer and star of Freedom's own TV station of the Royal Caribbean Network, RCTV. I need to know this from my own heart, ladies and gentlemen, as your cruise director. Have you had a wonderful cruise so far? I really, really hope you have. And like, this is our guest relations manager, Julie. Give Julie a big round of applause. Welcome, Julie. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to have you here. You know, Julie, before I start telling you what I'm talking about... The television station is run by Tim Exner. His team roams the ship, capturing the events of each day, and then broadcasts the material to every stateroom. We have seen it all there, people taking off all their clothes, uh, people taking off wigs, um, revealing a whole lot of stuff in front of a big group of people that they wouldn't normally do at all. I love it that it's soundproof. You little crap. Obviously New Year's is a big deal because everything has to come down to exactly one second. It all has to come together in a big way. The broadcast team is responsible for the ultimate countdown clock. With guests from all over the world, the stroke of midnight has to happen on Freedom's time. And it's going to be on Tim's watch. I'll be in the broadcast room um, maintaining the clock, making sure that it runs properly, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's, uh, it's not something you want something to go wrong with when everybody on the ship is relying on it. It won't be a party for the TV crew. Now I'll be shooting different things, making sure they're ready with the recording at the stroke of midnight to catch all the action and the kissing and, and everything like that. So. Ken has planned for the big countdown to happen here, on the Royal Promenade, which runs through the center of the ship. It's serviced by 14 glass lifts. The promenade has so many shops and bars, it's like a small town. It's situated on deck five and considered to be the heart of the ship. This afternoon, Ken is warming up the promenade with an around the world parade. One of the promenade's unique features is the descending super bridge. This afternoon, it's serving as a high-tech platform for the Freedom Singers. But on New Year's Eve, this is where Ken and Captain Pedersini will be positioned for the countdown to midnight. If parades aren't your thing, the world's largest cruise ship offers many alternatives. Freedom was the first ship in the world to have an onboard wave simulator. The Flow Rider pumps out over 113,000 litres of water per minute. These cruisers are more adventurous than most, which is making today a little nerve-wracking. In fact, Dr. Phil's rooms have just been called. 
you can come down now if you want to see him. Yeah. Someone so has dislocated okay. his shoulder and hurt his hand on the flow rider. Just fell, just fell, just like that. I hurt. That is so. Okay. Can't believe it. Dr. Phil's just happy that it's nothing contagious. One of the most popular events on all of Freedom's cruises is Ken's Love and Marriage Game Show. This happens in the Arcadia Theatre on Deck 3. The theatre seats almost 1,500 people, and Ken's Game Show usually fills the house. Three, two, one, and light! Together right now, we'll get together. Ooh wee baby, ooh wee baby, we want to play ooh wee baby. Number two, three. The TV crew broadcasts the show to every step room on the ship. And last but not least, your first name is? Sandy. Sandy and? Norman. Norman. Storm. Are you Storm and Norman? Sometimes. <laughs> Where is the strangest place you and your wife have ever made whooping? Now, very quickly. In southern Mexico, at a spa, they have a bubbler. <laughs> a private room and a bubbler. <laughs> In Mexico, it's the only a bubbler. Freedom's captain is in the dining room tonight. Privilege and honor to have with us our captain, your master, our Captain Carlos Pedersen from Argentina. The cruisers are loving the formal event. Most of them, anyway. When families spend their holidays like this, they want pictures to take home. So Freedom has appointed more than six dedicated professional photographers to capture every moment for about $20 a time. An estimated 30,000 photographs will be taken on this cruise. These are processed in the onboard Photoshop and are ready to be bought just hours later. Everything on Freedom is designed to be user-friendly, but Ken still has to deal with some interesting questions. If the pictures aren't marked, how do we know which one is ours? <laughs> it's your face. Do these stairs go up or down? Um, and then I, one of my favorites too is, uh, is the water in the toilet, fresh water or salt water? Who cares? You know, I've never tasted it. And I've never tasted it for two reasons, number one and number two. <laughs> so that's a little disgusting, but it's true, you know. Uh, a man called the front desk on the first day at sea and said, uh, send somebody down here to fix my microwave. So before we could tell him there no, there's no such thing as microwaves in your stateroom, he had hung up the phone. We sent somebody down there, found a piece of bread in his safe. He was trying to make toast in his safe. <laughs> but down here... Crazy questions are the least of anyone's worries. Dr. Van Niekerk has just had a patient diagnosed with a stomach bug. The patient will be isolated. Sometimes it's guests themselves that are bugs in the system. But Julie knows just what to do with passengers who behave badly. 
I mean, if we have any guests that are disturbing other guests' um, cruise vacation, or if they're um, rude or use foul language, or they're drunk and disorderly, anything that we find disturbing to the guests or guests have reported, then we would ask them to, to part the ship. In fact, we'd tell them to leave the ship. Julie is authorizing the removal of a guest at the next port. Congratulations, Julie speaking. Would you know what he looked like? It was reported that the accused guest set another guest's hair alight. He'll be subtly escorted off the ship. Okay, because I've got three, I've got four Arthurs on board. Let me write down the cabin numbers and then, um, um, all right, my love. Okay, bye. Guests behaving badly don't phase Julie. She's had to deal with far worse. The most difficult part and draining. Any guest who's died on board or anything, I have to comfort the, the people who are left with them. So you have to be a best friend, a parent, a mother, a, a sister, a brother, within 30 seconds to someone whose family member has died and you're all they have to cling on to. And you're there until the body is um, taken off the ship. And sometimes I've had it happen four times in a week and I was just completely wiped out because you have to give 100%. But even if there is a death on board, other guests would probably be none the wiser. The chocolate box stays intact at all costs. And even the deceased are well looked after on freedom of the seas. Well, we have a morgue on board. And um, aren't we depressing this morning? Yeah, we have a morgue on board. And we either land them in the next port of call um, with the guests or we take them back to Miami, depending. But of course, the coroner has to come on and check the body and everything. Everyone today is alive and well. And Freedom has docked at one of the most popular destinations in the Caribbean, Cozumel in Mexico. The local bar owners are aware that Freedom's guests are in party mode and they're determined to keep their spirits up. They've come up with a few novel pre-New Year's activities guaranteed to keep the momentum going and to fill a few pockets. Back on Freedom, there's dirty laundry of a different kind. Freedom has one of the busiest laundries on the ocean and down here, everyone is working overtime. The guests will be dressing up in expensive gowns and tuxedos that will need last-minute pressing, so sheets and towels need to be got out of the way. It's a tall order. Because the ship is so full, the laundry has more to handle than usual. We're going to have a bag full of noisemakers, more hats, more tiaras for the ladies to wear. Rumour has it he does the best New Year's in the fleet, and he's told everybody he's got everything under control, so I have a lot of faith in Ken. I love throwing a New Year's Eve Ken party. is pulling out all the stops for New Year's <laughs> no, for and has planned massive time. balloon everybody drops for the stroke balloon. of midnight. So as, we need to have all, all these balloon drops, balloons. We're going to have two project, well, projection systems on the promenade. Yeah, to explain that to me, where exactly is, if I'm standing on the super bridge, you'll be able Let's see the yeah, clock that, yeah. at midnight. There should never be somebody in Studio B going, Happy New Year, and two seconds later, somebody in is going, Happy New Year. Everybody should be doing exactly at the same time. It should work. Robert has to watch his alcohol stocks carefully. From his experience, guests on festive cruises like to indulge, and he has to be sure his supplies will last. Maritime law prohibits him from buying alcohol at any of the okay, ports. So contacting another ship in the fleet to see if it has extra supplies is usually his only option. But it's often tough during peak holiday times to get this kind of help. And meeting up with another ship and transferring supplies is never easy to arrange. But running out of alcohol isn't an option. The crew members live very separate lives from the guests. They're not allowed to use the main passageways on the ship unless absolutely necessary. Instead, they navigate their way along a hidden network of designated passages and stairways. At the core of this matrix is a main causeway running the length of the ship. The crew has unofficially named it the I-95, after a busy US highway. This is also how they commute to and from their quarters, a safe haven from the guests. This is the stuff in the office. This is Mr. Dane right here. All right, so come, let me show you. 
Anthony is part of Ken's entertainment team. This is the largest part of the dining room right here. This is where everybody sits. Freedom's crew members spend up to six a, months at sea lovely, and then have three to four months leave. Anthony was once Mr. Trinidad and Tobago for bodybuilding. He has a few hours off before work begins. He's on the late shift and won't pass up the opportunity to change gears for a while. It's my favorite game, yeah. I have one of this in my room as well. Anthony is the DJ of Freedom's hottest nightclub, The Crypt. After the countdown on New Year's Eve, he's expecting a big turnout in the club. Tonight, however, it's not too hectic, and he has a chance to try out his new set. For me as a DJ, what, what sucks is that my social life with other crew members is almost zero. Because of the times I work, when I'm working, everybody's off. But I have great opportunities to socialize with guests sometimes, it's great. There's a very thin line between socializing and fraternizing with guests and making dates. So we have to be very, very careful, and I totally understand why we have these rules in place. As Anthony warms up the guests, freedom slips swiftly into the night, with many of her 750,000 light bulbs ablaze. Bad weather has been forecast for tomorrow, and for the engineering staff here in the control room, one of the highest security areas on freedom, the issues are far more serious. Freedom is to dock in Grand Cayman tomorrow, a popular shopping destination, but also an area infamous for shipwrecks. At the bottom of the waters around these islands lie the remains of 140 ships. Down here, Chief Engineer Risto Kurilik is monitoring the weather situation carefully. He's in charge and has the power to stop the world's biggest cruise ship in her tracks with just the press of a button. This control room is Freedom's real powerhouse, an area strictly out of bounds. Every aspect of the ship's engineering operations is run from here. There are three and a half thousand kilometers of electric cable on Freedom, and for the chief engineer, it's not bad weather that's the biggest threat to the ship, it's fire. Everything here is so light sensitive that even a camera flash will shut it down. These are Freedom's fuel tanks. She can suck up 11,000 kilograms of fuel an hour. Just one electrical spark in the wrong place has more potential to cause tragedy than a hurricane. The biggest concern on board a ship is actually fire. There's something which really is a huge concern for everyone on board. Many people maybe don't think, you know, you are surrounded with the water, you know, so what, what is the big deal there? But it is. Part of our license is actually advanced firefighting training as well. Should disaster strike, this area of the ship can be quickly isolated. It's a pristine environment which houses some awesome energy. Freedom is powered by six Wardzilla Diesel 12 V46 generators. The ship is fast, traveling up to 42 kilometers an hour. Freedom's operating costs are huge. In fact, just a small change in her itinerary can cost an enormous amount. But one thing that's beyond even this control room's power is the weather. It hasn't improved, and Freedom is faced with a problem coming into Grand Cayman. The authorities have decided to close the port completely. In order to get to the shore, passengers have to be transported by small tender boats, but the waves are just too big for safety. No one will be leaving the ship today. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ken, your cruise director. We will not be going into the port of Grand Cayman due to the high winds and the fact that it would be very unsafe for anybody using the tendering operation. So the port authorities of Grand Cayman have closed their port, and we are going to spend a wonderful day out at sea. So let's make the best of it, everybody. The day was going to be reasonably quiet for the entertainment staff. Let's go, get up and let's go, let's go, let's go. And a good opportunity for the cleaners to spruce things up for the New Year's party. She's got some right here, so Many passengers aren't too happy about being stuck out at sea either. There will be a lot of guests that will be very upset, mad, uh, disappointed. But again, at the end of the day, there's nothing else we can do. It's just not good enough. Like, things to do in Grand Johan had planned to use the time when everyone was off the ship to give his chefs a few hours of well-deserved rest, 
But now they have to swing into action, preparing meals for everyone on board. There'll be a lot of comfort eating today. The situation isn't helping Robert either. At sea days usually mean that his alcohol stocks dwindle. He has to plan ahead for times like these. Here we go. Uh, All right, Jill, let's go. Ken has quickly put together a new plan of action for a day at sea. Now it's time to muster the troops and head for the pool deck. Busy cruisers are happy cruisers. Hello, hi there. Am I on TV? Yes, you are. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> the shopping trip isn't the only flop on freedom today. Ken's enthusiasm and determination keep most people happy. Freedom's many innovations help to keep everyone's chins up. The H2O theme park is unique, and Freedom was the first ship with cantilevered whirlpools, suspending soakers out over the ocean from the 11th deck. Unlike many cruise ships, all of Freedom's pools are filled with fresh water, 480 tons of it. And all this fresh water comes from Freedom's own desalination plant. Every day, 2,700,000 litres of seawater have the salt extracted by a desalination process. But of course, most of the cruisers don't give this a second thought. Captain Pedersini has managed to steer freedom clear of the worst of the weather and hopes that the elements will play ball when it comes to New Year's Eve. In spite of the size of the ship, guests do get seasick and rough weather won't help. Although everyone on freedom appears unruffled and even rehearsed on the surface, they have to deal with the realities of everything from natural disasters to crime on board. Undercover security staff are part of the plan to combat this, as are robotic cameras and Freedom's own law enforcement people. The security staff prefer to keep their activities low-key and wouldn't be interviewed. In case of emergency evacuation, Freedom is equipped with 30 large lifeboats and 78 inflatable life rafts strategically placed around the ship. We train our crew and make sure that they know what to do in the event of an emergency, any kind of accident, whether it is a collision or a fire, something like that. Dealing with safety and security issues, demanding guests and living far from home all takes its toll. It is difficult because, you know, families um, are far away, and especially during the time of the year where you celebrate you know, different things with your family, birthdays or different anniversaries. And understand that it is very difficult, people being away from home, a different environment, having to share a room. Every day is not a great day. And people need to keep that in mind. You need to respect people as human beings. Yeah, gossip is, is rife on board, of course, because we have nothing else to think about. So it's all very dramatic sometimes. I think sometimes dealing with my crew is harder than dealing with the guests. You know what I mean? Because the emotions behind it all, and you have to, and you have to work with each other 24 hours a day. You can't drive home and get away. Life can be tough if you don't have somebody to share it with. So, right now I don't have anybody. I'm single, and you know I do the joke. I'm single. I'm Ken looking for my Barbie. So, <laughs> very bad. But one day I know I'll find her. But for now, Barbie is going to have to wait. Negotiating with sister ships for extra supplies can be a real headache for Robert. But when his plans come together, it's all worth it. Transferring supplies at sea is never easy and takes some real organization. Usually it's only once the supplies are safely in the storerooms that Robert can relax. Even on the best managed ships, 
people sometimes go astray. On one trip, a woman completely missed the boat in Jamaica, leaving her eight-year-old daughter alone on board. Guests are told constantly that the ship will leave at its scheduled time, with or without them. But in this case, there was a problem. The young child couldn't travel without her mother, but Freedom couldn't turn back. Hello, Richard. After some negotiation, Captain Pedersini finally arranged for the Jamaican port authorities to bring the mother on board using a pilot boat. If a guest causes us to wait, we then have to speed up, use more fuel, we might be late into the next port of call. We did something very unusual, which was allowing the lady to join us on the pilot boat. This was a rare exception. Usually, any passengers left behind must find their own way home. But any dramas are soon forgotten, and guests and staff focus once again on cruising. Johan and his chefs are already hard at work with preparations for New Year's Eve. They're going overboard, and they won't get much sleep tonight. Bread for the big party has to be baked early. Meanwhile, Ken's balloon drops are posing a problem. All the hot air he can muster won't get thousands of balloons inflated without some help. He had hoped to use the diving tax, but they're all nearing empty. So he's called in some of the entertainment staff to give him a hand. Oh, there she goes! Yes, we have a keeper. It's the morning of New Year's Eve. Okay. I'll, I'll like the, Tim's the team has to improvise. The projector screen is damaged, so they have to make a new one. Let's take off the Santa hat off of the mermaid, please. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year's Eve. Yes, sir. Okay, so tell me this plan. It will take most of the day to prepare a sumptuous feast for almost 6,000 people. Johan has decided that lobster's on the menu tonight, 7,000 tails. Yeah, I don't, like you can keystone. Haha, <laughs> it's going to be a pain in the ass. The royal promenade is shaping up well. This will be a big night for expensive champagne, and Robert hopes he's got his numbers right. The screen will have the official countdown clock projected onto it, and it's almost ready to go. I gotta watch my knot. I didn't do Boy Scouts. All hands may be on deck now, but all eyes will be on the screen at midnight. Down in the laundry, the focus is no longer on the sheets and towels, but on designer outfits and evening gowns. Expensive dresses need special care, and the team is steaming ahead. The 7,000 lobster tails are as prepared as they can be. They'll only be cooked shortly before serving. But lobster tails are not to everyone's liking, and Johan has already received 1,400 special New Year's requests. Everything from macaroni to curry. You always have somebody who is never 100% happy. You can give them whatever you want. It's like you give him a little finger, he wants your whole hand, you give him the hand, he wants your whole arm. It's always like that. In the main dining room, the commander has gathered his troops. They challenge our confidence. They challenge our attitudes. They challenge the seats. The waiters are going to have to be extra efficient. The lobster must be served piping hot and the champagne ice cold. It's going to be rough out there tonight. Happy New Year. With the guests focused on getting ready, Julie's shift is almost over. She's planning on making it a quiet night. She has a feeling there'll be a lot on her plate in the aftermath of the celebrations. 
The entertainment team has worked hard in the build-up to New Year's, and they all hope that everything goes according to plan. On all of Freedom's cruises, the ice show is a popular attraction. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you realize where you are. You are on board the world's largest cruise ship, and you have entered the big time. That's right, this is the big time. The shows generally run smoothly, but falls do happen. That's when the producer and engineers work together. Activating the ship's stabilizers usually solves the problem. The dining room is starting to fill up. Everyone wants to savor Johan's fair tonight, and they're expecting great things. Nothing can worry us, you know. We have planned it, the plan is there, also everything should be fine. Dinner is served. It's a right royal feast on the world's biggest cruise ship, with some of the world's biggest eaters. One guest likes Johan's lobster tail so much, he eats 36 of them. While everyone enjoys dinner, Ken has a chance to change into his tuxedo and prepare for the big countdown show on the okay. promenade. Are you okay? I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I don't want to get in your way. After their meal, guests head for the Royal Promenade and the final countdown. Hello, boys. Everything all right? Party show's okay? Everything's great, Ken. All right, perfect. Are we all set, ready for the takeoff? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Okay, thank you. Back at the TV station, Tim's all dressed up with nowhere to go. My lucky little job at, at the stroke of midnight is actually being in this room, usually, well, pretty much all the time by myself. Tim may be alone, but the guests on the promenade most certainly are not. It's filling up fast. The promenade has never been this full, and some people are finding the crowd too much. But midnight is approaching fast, and the show must go on. It's taken a stressful week of planning to get to this point. Just another one of those apparently seamless events on the world's biggest cruise ship as she celebrates her first New Year's Eve. For the guests, it's been a fairy tale evening on Freedom. The clock has struck 12, with not a pumpkin or ugly sister in sight. Ken and the team have pulled off a massive event with their usual smooth applause. Tomorrow, it's just another working day. I'm not supposed to do this guy now. <laughs>